Okay, so I blew it up a little bit to make it easier to see as we go forward, but there's the last couple of commands that we did down there. Um, by the way, uh, there is one other way to set the working directory. Like you can actually navigate to the working directory and then you can see there's a set as working directory and a go to working directory commands here that will allow you to do that as well. That's through the graphical. But I always like showing up through the, the typing version, the command line version, because that's the way real R is. This is something that's added in by R Studio, right? Um, so in this section, I want to talk a little bit about uh, variables. And you kind of saw this very briefly before, right? Uh, but to create a variable in R, all you really need to do is assign it a value, right? So I can assign the variable y the value of 100, right? And there's this special character, which is like a less than and a minus, which is the assignment character, right? Um, so that will create a variable called y um, that will be equal to 100. Oh, I've got an error along there. Oh, this is, sometimes you get these little, um, graphics errors that show up in our studio depending upon how you're doing things, right? Um, so now if I want to, I can take those variables and I can do something. So I created the X one last time, right? So I can create a new variable called A that's not set a particular value but defined by X times Y, right? So it's gonna be a thousand, right? Um, and I can do all the standard kind of arithmetic. I can do A is equal to X divided by Y, right? Which gets 0.1. I can do a is um, x raised to the y, right, which is going to give me a really large number. Um, and I could do, of course, a is equal to x minus y, right? So, so you can do all the kind of standard arithmetic that you could do in any sequence. You can use equals as well. Equals will basically do the same thing, but it is more r like to use this assignment error variable just to make it very clear what's going on, right? Um, one other thing, and I showed this off a little bit last time, is the kind of the sequence command. And um, this is kind of a unique thing in R that's kind of useful where um, you can assign to a variable a sequence of numbers. And the way you do that easily is you can type for just simple sequences, you can just type a colon between the starting number and the ending number. So if I type A equals one to 10, I then get the sequence one to 10 is what A equals. Now there's a more complex version, and I'll bring up the help so we can look at it, called actual sequence, right? And sequence generation will allow you to do more complex than just like one to 10. So uh, for instance, I always like to scan down to the examples because that's usually the easiest way. If I wanted to do every other number, I can say A is equal to the sequence one comma 10, by equals two, right? And now I'll get the odd numbers because it'll do one, skip two, do three, skip four, do five, and so forth, right? Um, and you can do even weird things. You can, for instance, one of the examples they mentioned is by equals pi, right? So now I'm getting one, 4.14, which is one plus pi, right? And so forth. Actually, you know, if you want to see it a little bit easier, right? It's nice to do a zero so you get the, the actual pi value in there in the middle. Um, it's, it's displaying two digits down here, but it's storing more than those, by the way. Um, and of course, you know, you can even do um, more complex things than that, right? And there's some examples if you want to look in here. Let's talk about one other kind of simple command that you often use, which is the repeat command, the replicate command, right? Um, so replicate basically will allow you to create a, um, we'll take a look up here real quick. It will, will um, create a series essentially um, that is um, replicated over time, right? Um, so the value is gonna be the same thing as what you're putting in. So for instance, if I want to make A be a rep repetition of that sequence of one colon four twice, I can just say repeat one colon four twice and I get the sequence one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? Um, and I can do, and there's a quick way to kind of generate arbitrary sequences, right? Um, so I can, for instance, do two comma two comma two, right? And what this is gonna do is gonna say, 
So the C is a concatenate, and we'll talk a little bit about that. But it's essentially saying, repeat the first number twice, the second number twice, the third number twice, and the fourth number twice, right? Which is interesting, right? Um, it's, kind of, it's kind of a little bit different. So rather than doing one, two, three, four, it's doing one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, right? Um, and that's actually the same as if I just said each equals two, which would repeat each number twice, right? So it could see the same. Oh, I forgot to put my end pren, right? But it could see the same result. So these are just a couple, couple of little functions that you can play around with, and you obviously can do all the standard math. But let's say you have some sort of way of generating these sequences, and you want to store it, right? You want to use it. So then what you need to start thinking about doing, right, is writing it into a script so you can save it. Right now, as I mentioned, this is all in the console. It's going to be deleted. So I can go up here, and I can say x is 10, y is 100, and a is x times y, right? So I can have those commands up there, and then I can save those to a file, and you'll notice it's gonna put it in the AI directory, because that's where I told it to put the working directory, and I can call this first r, right? And the standard extension for R, the little part afterwards, is a capital R. So I could say first R dash dot R, hit save, and it'll save it off. And now those commands will be saved forever. Now you might ask, well, those commands are up there, and that's great, but how do I get them to actually execute in the console, right? So just to show you, you can do this. One thing, by the way, whenever you're you're done with what you want to do, you probably want to hit this clear objects, and this is going to remove all the objects in the environment. So I just deleted the X and the Y and the A, right? Now let's say I want to get back. I can actually select the code that I want to execute if I don't want to execute all of it. And then I can hit, on the Max it's Command Enter. I believe on the, on the PCs it's Alt Enter. And that will actually essentially copy and paste those lines down to the console and then execute them, right? 